This is a current source. In this video, we're going to learn how to design one using transistors. Now, why might you even want to use current sources? Well, if you watched my last video on differential amplifiers, you will remember that if we replace a resistor with a current source in the differential amplifier, then we make the amplifier better. Things are improved. The common mode gain, for example, is much improved if we use a current source rather than a resistor. But there are other reasons why a current source would be better than a resistor. First of all, resistors are more difficult to fabricate on integrated circuits. You have to dissipate power, so they tend to be big. You also don't want to unnecessarily waste power on microchips where heat dissipation might be a problem. So if we can design a current source that uses transistors rather than resistors, then it helps in terms of the miniaturization. As you'll see in a moment, it is possible to design current sources mainly using transistors. That helps us both in terms of the performance of our differential amplifiers and in terms of IC design. Let's see how it can be done. Our strategy for designing a current source is going to make use of the fact that the lines on this curve are pretty much flat. Look at what happens as we change the collector voltage on this transistor. The collector current more or less stays the same over a very large range of collector voltages. The fact that it's flat is advantageous because that's exactly what a current source does. An ideal current source gives you the same current regardless of the voltage. That's what we have here. Now I realize when we have a little bit more base current, these lines have a little bit of a slope to it. That's going to cause a current source to be imperfect, but at least down here for these lower base currents, we see almost a flat line. This is the reason why we can use transistors to make pretty good current sources. Let's imagine for a moment that I fix my collector voltage at 30 volt, and what I'm going to change now is my base emitter voltage. The observation here is that the collector current is mostly determined by my base emitter voltage. For example, if I wanted my current source to give me 200 milliamps of current, all I would need to do is put 0.85 volts here at the base, and I would have exactly 200 milliamps of current flowing down the collector. That's how I can program my current source. I give it a voltage, it gives me a current. Let's go back to our problem. This is the circuit symbol of a current source, and we're going to have to replace this with some set of transistors that does the same job. This is the set that we're going to use. This is called a current mirror. It's called a current mirror because the left side looks very similar to the right side. The left side kind of programs the right side of the circuit. We're going to be setting the base voltage by choosing the appropriate resistor R sub ref. Let me show you how that's done. Let's label our base voltage V sub B. Let's label our collector voltage over here VC1. So I'm kind of thinking about the left transistor as being transistor one and the right transistor as being transistor two. If both transistors are on and they're in the forward active mode, then my base voltage should be about 0.7 volts for both. Because of this wire here that connects my base to my collector of the left transistor, I can just say that these two voltages are equal to one another. So the collector voltage there is also 0.7 volts. Let's now calculate the reference current, which is just the collector current. Using Ohm's law across the reference resistor, we have VCC minus 0.7 divided by R ref. I know I just said that the base voltage is 0.7 volts, but it's not really going to be 0.7 volts. It's going to be whatever voltage is required to maintain that reference current. If these transistors are the same, Perhaps they're fabricated right next to each other on the same wafer. As long as they're the same, then we expect the IV characteristics of the two transistors to be very similar. So whatever the base voltage actually is, the current on the left should be the same as the current on the right. We can thus choose the resistor R ref in order to fix our reference current on the left, which should then be mirrored on the right side of the circuit as well. The reason the currents are the same is because these two base emitter voltage drops are exactly the same. 
Of course, this only works if the two transistors have the same IV characteristics. You might recall that I just mentioned a few moments ago that one of the advantages of using a current source is that we can get rid of one of the resistors in our design. It's easier to make transistors on chip than resistors, but this circuit has a resistor. What have I saved? I started with one resistor in my differential amplifier and I'm saying now, let's just replace it with two transistors and one resistor and things will get better. But it looks like I've replaced one resistor with three circuit components. How could it possibly get better? Well, the thing about these current mirrors is that you really only need one resistor to set the current, but we can set the current in multiple places. For example, I could hook up a lot of secondary transistors or a lot of right sides of this particular current mirror and the same current would flow in all of the transistors. That means for one integrated circuit, we might only need a single resistor to program that current for multiple branches of the same current mirror. That's where the savings come into play. You just need one resistor, but you program lots of currents with it. All of these currents will be the same as the reference current. You might notice that all of the currents are pointing downwards. It's not really a current source, is it? This is pretty much a current sink. It pulls current from whatever I hook up to the circuit. What if I wanted a current source instead, something that pushes current, what would I do? Well, I could just turn the whole thing upside down and replace my NPN transistors with PNP transistors. Here's how it would look. In this case, the analysis is almost like what it was before. We have a particular emitter base voltage here on the left, and we're going to have the same emitter base voltage over here on the right. Those should both be some numbers near 0.7 volts, but the actual voltage is going to vary a bit depending on the current we have coming down here through the reference resistor. Let's label this the collector voltage of transistor one. The reference current down here can be determined by Ohm's law. It's just VC1 divided by R ref. Well, the collector is attached to the base here of both transistors by a wire, so we know these voltages are equal to one another. Furthermore, we know our base voltage is going to be roughly 0.7 volts below our power supply voltage. We can thus use the reference resistor to program the reference current. Because the two emitter base voltage drops are the same in both transistors, then the current flowing through the collector of transistor two should be almost the same as the reference current flowing through transistor one. Of course, there are some imperfections with the current mirror. One of the imperfections arises because earlier we said that the collector current is mainly determined by the base emitter voltage drop. I mentioned that all we need to do if we want a particular collector current flowing through this transistor is to just dial in the appropriate base emitter voltage drop. But it turns out that the voltage on the collector also matters. Here's what the curve looks like if we have 30 volts up at the collector. Here's what it looks like if we have only three volts at the collector. If we dial in, say, 0.85 volts here, but the collector voltage is not fixed, we might get two different values of our collector current. This means that if we change the load of our current mirror, there will be a little bit of variation in the current through that load. And of course, that's not what we want if we're trying to make a perfect current source. We want that current to be fixed no matter what voltage we put on it. So this motivates more complicated designs for current mirrors, but I hope you've gotten the basic idea from watching this video.